Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about how to TIG weld with LiftArc. We're gonna go everything from what LiftArc is, how to set up your machine, as well as welding technique to get you going. So let's start off with what LiftArc is. So the earliest TIG welders actually used stick welding machines, and just like you had to strike an arc with a stick welder, you had to scratch start is what they would call it with a TIG welder. Now, in order to avoid having to do that, uh, some of the more modern power supplies like this HTP Invertig have high frequency arc starting that will actually send high voltage electricity to start your arc and then you can send your high current electricity through that air that's been ionized. Well, lift arc is kind of in between the two. You don't have the circuitry to run that high frequency arc starting, but you do have some electronics that will reduce the amount of current while you actually touch the tungsten electrode to your workpiece to start your arc and then increase it as soon as you lift it off of there. So that's what lift arc is. Now let's talk about how to set up a machine for lift arc, and in particular one of the multi-process machines. This one is a Miller Multimatic 215. It's a MIG welder that can also run TIG and stick welding. Now to set this up for TIG welding, I'm gonna just remove my cables, attach a torch here to the negative lead, um, because electrode negative is typically what you'll wanna use for TIG welding about 99% of the time. Now when you are setting this up for TIG welding, keep in mind that you will need to run straight argon shielding gas as opposed to a mix like CO2 or a CO2 argon blend that you might be using for MIG welding with a machine like this. Now in this case, the shielding gas flows right through the torch but you'll just have to get the connectors to hook up to your machine and in my case I also have a foot pedal that's a remote amperage control that I'm going to use connected here. We'll also try it without the remote amperage control because there's a few nuances to how you actually run the process especially at the end of a weld. Now for my particular setup I didn't actually buy the kit from Miller themselves. I bought components that I knew that I would like and a great place to get those is a wide variety of torches and foot pedals available is USA Weld and I have a discount code linked in the description below. Discount code Tim Welds will save you 5% there if you're looking for some stuff to set up your machine to run TIG. Now let's go ahead and talk about our settings. So when you're setting a machine here, there's really only one that you have to mess with on here, and that is your amperage. And a good rule of thumb is one amp per one thousandth of an inch of material thickness. For example, one eighth of an inch is 125 thousandths, you'd run about 125 amps. Now for those of you who use the metric system, which is, you know, the whole rest of the world, um, you'd run right around 40 amps per millimeter. So that similar thickness is about three millimeters and that works out to be right around 120 amps. That's gonna get you in the ballpark and you can dial it in a little bit as you get going. Now let's talk about the fundamentals of the welding technique. The first thing that's important is your arc length. And what arc length is, is how far the tungsten electrode is away from your workpiece. In general, around the diameter of your tungsten electrode, if you keep that much of a gap, I mean, that's really hard to judge, but you know, that's kind of what you're shooting for there. So watch here as I weld along, this is going pretty well. However, on this weld, there's a couple of things going wrong, but one of them is my arc length is just way too long, and so I don't have good control over my weld pool. The next fundamental aspect of the process is your torch angle. Now there are two different directions to look at your torch angle. One is called your travel angle, and that is in the direction that you're moving. So let's say I'm welding along here. I'm gonna wanna tip my torch forward just a little bit, and that'll help me push my puddle along and let me add some filler metal in there as I go along. Now the other one is your work angle. So if I was welding along bead on plate in the direction perpendicular to my travel, I'd wanna be going straight in and out of it. However, if I'm welding a fillet weld like on this T-joint, I'm gonna to wanna to go in here right around 45 degrees. The next one is your travel speed. Now travel speed is an interesting one with TIG welding because it works together with your amperage a little bit to control the width of your weld bead. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you take a look at these three welds here, they were all done with the same amperage, but these two were done at a faster travel speed than this other one, and you can see that the weld is a fair bit smaller. And so for the same amperage, if you travel faster, you're gonna have a smaller bead. If you travel slower, you'll have a wider bead. 
Now there are limits to that, right? If you go too fast, you're not going to have good fusion and you won't penetrate down into your material. If you go too slow, you risk burning through, especially on really thin material. The last fundamental aspect we'll talk about is adding filler metal to your weld pool. I'd recommend running a few beads without any filler metal along just to focus on those fundamentals we've talked about so far. But once you're feeling pretty good about that, that you have a weld pool that you're able to move along, you can start adding some filler metal. And the way to do that is just to put little dabs of filler metal into the very leading edge, the front edge of that weld pool. That will give you a nice, even weld bead. Let's take a look at a common problem I've seen a lot of beginners run into and I ran into myself. Now this is that same clip where I had a long arc length and that long arc length goes along with this problem as well. And that is that your filler metal will actually start to ball up and melt off before you put it into your weld pool and it'll transfer after it's already melted. The problem with this is it will oxidize and you aren't gonna have a lot of good control as well as filler metal when you put it directly into the weld pool has a little bit of a heat sink effect and chills your weld pool just a little bit. So if you see your filler balling up and dropping in, Pay a little bit of attention to your arc length and your positioning of your weld filler to try to avoid that and intentionally dab it directly into the leading edge of your puddle and you'll come out with a result that you'll be much happier with. Now that we've talked about the fundamentals of the welding technique, let's talk about the start, middle, and end of a weld bead. So when you start with lift arc, first you have to put your tungsten electrode down and then lift it up. And if you have a foot pedal, you can start at lower amperage. If not, you're just gonna have full amperage right off the bat. Now, as soon as you start the arc, you need to sit there at the start of your weld and wait for a weld pool to form before you try to add filler or move along or do anything. You need to get that weld puddle established. And once that's established, go ahead and add the first dab of filler metal in there and start moving forward. And your progression will be a little bit slower at first uh, as things warm up. And then here as we run through the middle, I'm trying to add filler metal just as consistently as I can and be mindful of those fundamentals that we talked about, the arc length, your torch angles, your travel speed, and how I'm adding filler as I work along here. And that brings me to the end of the weld. Now the end of the weld bead is one of the most difficult parts. We're gonna talk about it first when you have a variable amperage control like a foot pedal, because this is the part of the weld where having that amperage control is a huge benefit. And then afterwards, we'll turn off that variable amperage control and just run it with a straight lift arc, uh, full current, and show you how to do that. So when I have variable amperage control, as I'm approaching the end of my weld, I'm actually backing off my foot pedal a little bit and reducing amperage. And then when I get up here to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra a little dab of filler metal to fill things in so I don't have a crater and then move off the center of that and then taper off really slowly. Here we'll watch that another time uh, as I taper off really slowly out of the weld pool. Now if you don't have the benefit of a variable amperage control as that heat starts accumulating towards the end, the way to combat that is actually by speeding up just a little bit and moving a little bit faster as that heat has penetrated and you don't have to have the torch on a certain point for quite as long. So I'm going to speed up a little here going to the end then add a little bit of extra filler metal at the end and then I need to snap right out of it. And the challenge with that is that it's difficult to keep the shielding gas flowing on your weld pool as you snap out of there. So I try to just pivot around my wrist to break the arc and go right back to having shielding gas flow on there, but it's difficult to keep things going. Now there's one trick that I saw, I think it was on a YouTube video, I don't remember where. If anybody knows who uh, came up with this, let us know in the comments and I'll link it in the description. But anyway, a little trick that you can do is take a scrap piece of copper, this is a piece of copper I had laying around, I'm just gonna try this out, and you can actually jump over to that as you finish your weld. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra filler metal here at the end, and then jump over to that piece of copper there. That allows the shielding gas to keep flowing on the end of my weld, and then I can snap out of that copper piece that isn't gonna melt because it's absorbing all that heat in there. All right, so now you can get out there, set up that multi-process to run a little bit of lift TIG. Let me know how it's going down in the comments below what questions you've got. And if you wanna know more, check out the other videos I've linked in the description below, and we'll see you next time.